I'm Jeffrey Weiss. I'm with Preparedness Network. Thank you so much for joining us on this new series called Chapters, where we're exploring from John Maxwell coaches what inspired them to become groupies for this man named John Maxwell and what, and what he has done for us in our lives and what our favorite chapters and what our favorite books are that, he, that he's written. He's written a, quite a few of them, over, over 65 books to date, and, and it's obviously growing and growing. I met Michael at the at the leadership conference in August, and we and we just kicked it off a lot. Very 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 dynamic guy, and so I wanted to start off my new series called Chapters with Michael. Hello, Michael. How you doing? Hey, Jeff. Good to see you again. Thank you so much for joining me here. I really appreciate it. So you went to we all went to this conference in August. It was it was phenomenal, wasn't it? Absolutely loved it. How many conferences have you been to? Do you know? I believe this was my third in-person conference. And then we've had a couple of virtual conferences over the COVID years. So in becoming a John Maxwell coach and trainer, um, you know, uh, things inspire us. I wanted to ask you, you know, there was a term that, we've, that we people have had been banting around. It's called servant leader. What does servant leader mean to you? Yeah, so servant leader is very important to me. In fact, when I was a young boy, my grandpa Joe was my hero, and I learned about being a servant leader from him. So, so really to me, what servant leader means is just, is me adding value to other people, taking my eyes completely off of myself and seeing how can I help or how can I support someone else? How can you help and support someone else? That's a great thing. You know, John Maxwell says, you know, the greatest way to add value to ourselves is to add value to others. Yes. I totally get that. So Grandpa Joe inspired you to become a servant leader. Yes. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll, I can tell you a little bit about my Grandpa Joe. So growing up, because of the way my mom, my mom worked, she would see me over my grandpa, grandpa's house almost every single day. And so I spent a lot of time with him. But Jeff, when I was eight years old, the unthinkable happened. My grandpa got sick and he came down with a bad case of diabetes and he lost circulation to his legs and they had to, cut, they had to amputate his legs below the knee. Oh, my God. And they gave him two heavy, uncomfortable prosthetic legs. Now, for most people, they would have kept him in bed, but not my grandpa, Joe, right? Because he loved serving people. So he would strap on those legs and he would go out and serve in the community. He would even drive people around in his car and he would deliver newspapers for people. I learned how to cut grass for my grandpa with his prosthetic legs. He would be pushing them more and I would see that. And then, of course, he would let me do it. And then eventually I took over. But that was the kind of man my grandpa Joe was. And I never really understood why he did what he did as a young boy. But I can still remember sitting at his funeral and hearing people talk about how my grandpa had served them and just the things that he had done for the community. And I was like, man, I, I want to be like that. And so that was really my true inspiration when I was a young, when I was a young man. One of my favorite poems of all is uh, called The Dash. And it basically talks about, you know, what we, we, the day we're born and the day we die. And in between that day, the days we're born and the days we die, is a dash. How do we fill our dash? And it looks like Grandpa Joe filled his dash with a lot of, a lot of servitude. Yes. So how has serving people helped you in your business? Wow, it's been amazing. So my grandfather passed away when I was, I believe I was 21 years old. And since that point, going forward, I've always looked for opportunities to serve people. So I, I still work a full-time job and I've been with the company for 28 years. So throughout those 28 years, because I've served so much inside the company, I've been recognized with multiple awards and been given opportunities just because I was serving people first, right? I was doing it, not like looking for a position or a promotion or something, but I was just taking my time and helping other people and people noticed it. So then the same happened when I joined Toastmasters many years ago. And I started doing the same thing inside Toastmasters. And I became the Toastmaster of the Year in 2019 and had multiple opportunities to, to serve and lead in, throughout that organization. And then when I joined the John Maxwell team, it was the same way. So just me serving... A, had them reach out to me and ask me to join the faculty. It wasn't even anything that was on my radar, but they reached out to me because they heard about how I was taking my time and serving other people, other members within the community. 
That's great. So tell me about Michael Pope Training. What is that? Yeah, so Michael Pope Training, so that's that's Michael Pope Training LLC. I'm the coach's tech guy. So my background is in IT software development and all of that. And what I found out once I became a coach in 2019, I started seeing other members who are great at coaching, great at speaking, leadership and all of that, but they were struggling with some of the technology. You know, how do I use Zoom properly? How do I use StreamYard? How can I use create graphics, landing pages and all of that? So that's when Michael Pope training evolved, where I am now able to help and assist coaches, speakers, entrepreneurs, you know, small business owners with some of those technical needs that most people just don't know how to do. And they come natural to me. And so you help them win in, in, in the technical stuff, uh, Zoom training, because I noticed that, you know, a lot of people get on Zoom and they don't know how to position themselves. You know, they sit too close to the camera and they cut <laughs> off the top of their head or they have virtual backgrounds and they move around a lot, which causes the virtual background to go in and out. You know, they, they, they get too close to the camera and they use hand gestures and the hand gestures become stra distracting. So there's, a, there's an art to understanding about Zoom. And I think that not too many people took advantage of the opportunity that the COVID gave us to really master our, our, virtual, our virtual speaking opportunities. Yes, I, I agree with you on that. But it does, for the people who are ready and who have embraced it, I mean, it opens up a lot of opportunities. I mean, I've been able to serve people all around the world because of this wonderful technology and because I understand it. So you have this company, how, how, how long has Michael Pope Training been in existence? I think I officially got my LLC in, I think, April 2020. So it was shortly after COVID started because I was already doing some of those technical things. But then once I realized that I could actually monetize it, it, it opened up some doors for me. Definitely opened up a lot of doors for a lot of us who are technically inclined. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story, though, Jeff, though. So when I, when I joined the Maxwell team, my goal originally was to completely separate my technical background and just focus on personal growth and leadership. That's all I wanted to do inside the Maxwell organization with the content. But then it's like people started having these questions and I was like, ugh, I know the answer, you know, like kind of debating, should I, shouldn't I type of thing. But because, you know, serving is part of who I am, I reached out to them and said, hey, this is how you do it. Or, hey, I, I'll hop on a Zoom with you and help you figure out how to go live on Facebook or, or whatever they're doing. So it was just a natural progression. Oh, that's good. And so what do you do in your speaking part? What do you do as a coach or speaker? Yeah, so as a public speaker, I still use a lot of the Maxwell content where I'm talking about becoming a leader, right? So so for me, in, in the favorite book is The Developing Leader Within You. So growing up, I didn't see myself as a leader for, for many years, even into my early adult life. I didn't think I could be a leader because I thought that, I thought leadership was a title or Someone had to appoint you as the leader. And I, I had never had that opportunity growing up. But I read John's book. I, I actually read his original Developing the Leader 1.0 book. And that let me know that I could be a leader, that I had what it took, took to be a leader because John says that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And because I now knew that I could influence people, it started raising my lid of awareness with leadership. And I started teaching and helping other people do the same. So the book that you that you chose to talk about with us today was Developing the Leader Within 2.0. Yeah, so John rewrote the book. And I, I like this book better, but I, I but I still hold dear and hard the original book because this it was the first John Maxwell book that I read when I was in my early 20s. So what it, what is the basic difference between 1.0 and 2.0 besides the thickness and the color? <laughs> I think, so in this one here, the, the new one, John talks more about serving others in this one. Serving others and adding value Yeah, emphasized a lot more in this book, I believe, than this one. And I believe it's just because of the growth that John had in between writing these two books. So the chapter you chose you want to talk about was chapter seven, The Heart of Leadership. Tell me about that chapter. Let's let, like, give me a synopsis overview of that chapter by itself. It's an amazing chapter. And for someone like me, I love going back and reviewing it. I've got it well, is well highlighted in my book. And so John Maxwell says that, you know, the heart of leadership is based on serving others, not ourselves. 
And just that whole that whole mindset of I'm doing this for someone else, not for me. It's it's so much more rewarding to me anyway. Right. It's like I tell people all the time now, if I'm asked to do something, I prepare it, even if it's a even if I'm speaking for free somewhere, I prepare it as if I'm getting paid ten thousand dollars because I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for someone else. So I want to make sure that I give them the proper attention and preparation that's required to make sure that I can show up properly. And part of that, the attitude that's in that the in, that's in this chapter about serving others and adding value to others, that's what makes me do that. Well, what do you think about this chapter that can really inspire other people? I think anyone can be inspired by it. I think a great environment for it would be probably some of the younger generation. Because I know for me, even watching my grandpa Joe serve other people, I didn't understand it. But once I started to understand why he did what he did and the, and how he benefited other people, it opened up my eyes and made me want to start doing the same thing. And I think that the younger that we can show people how to serve, uh, the, the better they're going to be. So for my wife and I, we serve in our children's ministry at our church. And so our, our we have three boys, uh, 15, 14, and nine, and they've all seen us serving in church. And so they've started doing the exact same thing with us. Like our two oldest, they're too old for kids' church, but they come over in the morning on Sundays and they help serve the kids, you know, welcoming the kids and helping people troubleshoot things with the check-in process, right? Because they're they're in that environment of people who are serving. And so they're kind of like, it's natural to them. And that's what John talks about in his book, right? And it's creating that atmosphere where people see serving as just a way of life. And I think that's the core of, of, of most, most churches in this country, most churches, synagogues, mosques, the one thing that all religions really have in common, I think, is servitude. I think that that is something that, you know, there are many differences, and but there are a few things in common. And one thing that that I that I got with from John, you know, I was listening to one of his speeches the other day, and he and he and he read a list of every different kind of religion and the golden rule. He said he he read the golden rule in like 10 different religions from Hinduism to Muslims to Christians to Jews to Buddhists. And they all had the basic same principle of the golden rule of do unto others as as you would have them do unto you. And I think that that leads into servitude in into churches and synagogues and mosques. And, and it is the core of of of, of most religions and, and giving back. I agree absolutely, yeah. Because it's like like the in the in this book in this chapter here, you know, the heart of leadership is based on serving others, not ourselves. And so, and that's what that golden rule is, right? Is 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 do unto others as you would have you know, done do unto you. But you're not focused on you; you're focused on other people, making them be better. Um, so yeah, absolutely. That's that's interesting. That he did that. That's cool. You know, in a lot of our cultures, and you know, religion has been a divisive thing and into us all. But when you get down to it and you look at the core of what a religion, of what all religions say, and, you know, whether, you know, they don't teach about hatred, they don't teach about that. That is a, an external lesson that is taught by people who really mis, misread some of the teachings of different religions. And I think that that, 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 was, a, that was something that, very, that got me a little bit interested in, in, and drew me into what, what John was speaking about that. So tell me about your experience on this stage on, at the leadership conference. It was absolutely amazing, right? You were standing on stage in front of over 2,000 people and sharing about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, which is serving others. And it was, it was great, um, great experience. I'm so thankful to, have, to be able to honor my grandfather, to share like, you know, what he meant to me and how I've taken up his his baton, if you will, and and decided to start making serving others part of who I am. And for me, I, I've had opportunities to speak about my grandfather and on many platforms. This was obviously the largest, over two thousand people, and it was very 
rewarding for me on a personal level because I remember in 1990, 1993, sitting on the front row of my Grandpa Joe's funeral, and people were going up talking about him. And one of my cousins leaned over and said, hey, little Mike, are you going to go up and talk about Grandpa Joe? And I wanted to, Jeff. I mean, I really wanted to go and tell them what my grandpa meant to me. But the fear of public speaking kept me in my seat. And, and that kind of haunted me for years. And it, it made me learn how to speak and get over that fear of public speaking. So it was such an honor to be able to share about what my grandpa Joe meant to me. And, you know, I, I keep his. So this is the award I talked about in the story that my grandpa Joe won an award. It was a Thomas Jefferson Servant Leadership Award. In the back of it, it says, in recognition of outstanding public service. And he received this award in 1990, I believe 1993 is when he received the award because he, he actually died in 1994. So he received the award in 1993. And I keep that award with me just to, as a reminder of the lives you can change by by being willing to serve other people. It's, it's, that ripple effect is amazing. That is, that is, that is amazing. So you, what you, so you became a coach in, in, in 19 and 20 and you launched your business. So what inspired you to actually join the leadership team of that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm part of the faculty for the marketing solutions group. And I, and I started with the faculty in January, 2021. And to be honest with you, it wasn't even on my radar. I had no desire of, of working with the faculty. But it just happened that I started volunteering my time to help serve other members. And then a word got around, like enough people were, were sharing testimonials. I mean, I wasn't even asking them to, to tell anybody. I was actually trying to keep it a secret because I didn't want to get in trouble. But it kept spreading the word around. Hey, Michael Pope had helped me with this. Michael, you need to talk to Michael Pope. He helped me with this. And then so, so someone at, you know, so then a couple of the, um, Kayla and Shyla on the Maxwell team, they reached out to me and they asked me to join the President's Advisory Council, which is the volunteer organization inside the Maxwell team. Right. And I, I submitted my application for that. But during that process, Chris Robinson came to them and said, hey, you guys, based on the work, you, the work you're doing, you should have a faculty. And so they were looking to pick their faculty members. So they reached out to me right away and said, hey, I know you just filled the application to join PAC, the President's Advisory Council. However, we, we're now putting in place a faculty to support our marketing initiatives. Would you be willing to be a part of that team? And I said, absolutely, yes. I mean, I was honored and still really humbled and honored to be a part of that team. So you're also part of the mentorship part, right? Yes, yes, yes. I love I love the mentorship and the training that we get access to. Tell me a little about mentorship. Tell me a little about what that is. Yeah, so mentorship really is a it's an opportunity to get around other people. We have access to more calls, but we can get on the calls and I can ask specific questions about my business, right? If I if I'm feeling stuck in an area, maybe my struggle is reaching out and making making calls to even ask for people to be coaching clients or business, you know, or to allow me to speak somewhere. Well, I can get on a mentorship call and participate in one of the role playing activities or just have someone give me those encouraging words to say, hey, you can do it. Hey, I felt those fears before. Here's how I overcame it through action, right? So you, you can go through that process. And that's what mentorship does for me. I love being able to hop on the calls or, or be in accountability partnership with some of the, some of the leaders who are building their business. So then the beauty behind it all is that within like our organization, we realize there's no competition. So that means that if I have a solution, I can freely share my solution with other members and not be concerned about losing business. Absolutely, because we're all we're all we're all part of the we're all part of the same group, and we're all spread over all the countries, and we all have our different our, our different you know we're taking the John Maxwell lessons and applying it in our own little kind of way that is that is that is our own kind of niche yeah absolutely i know another thing you do is i know we discussed this is another thing you do is you play the leadership game right yeah so i i love the leadership game i'll yeah so this is this is the maxwell leadership game here i love playing this game with organizations right it's, it's called a game but really what it is is a 
wonderful communication tool to help really to help leaders start answering some of those questions to their teammates that normally you wouldn't you wouldn't ask. Playing in the format of a game, getting people to truly open up. It's it's amazing how I've seen people, coworkers that have worked together for years, they're sitting there answering questions and they look at each other like, wow, I didn't know that about you. Because it asks some of those questions that you normally wouldn't ask in a normal day conversation. When I played it, it really helped me identify who the leaders are. One thing that every company has a lack in is leaders. Yeah, I agree. And there are different levels of leaders. There's leaders that are, that are fives and sevens and tens. If you have tens, you're great. But, you know, but then tens turn eights into tens. You know, they, they, leaders love to be around leaders and love to make leader, leaders better than they are. Also, another thing that, that you've done a lot of is the disc, is the disc situation, you know, and that's a good identifier too, to identify what, you know, where you are on this, in, the, in the business spectrum, right? Absolutely, yeah, with the disc program. Like normally if I'm, if I'm teaching, if I'm working with a company on, about leadership or, they're trying to raise their leadership awareness. I always talk about the importance of discovering your strengths and going through our, the, like the Maxwell disc tool behavior ability tool really helps with that, helping you to understand like, you know, what are your strengths and what are your areas of improvement? For me, I understand my personality style really well. And that helps me because that way I can serve in areas of my strengths and I'm more effective when I'm doing that. When I'm working in areas of my strength, I'm more effective. I have, it's, it's less stressful, less pressure. It's really easy to flow in your strength zone. Tell me about a disc assessment story that you did. Yeah, so I'll, I'll share one. Um, so I did a, a youth disc assessment a little while ago at a, at a local school here. We had maybe, I think, 25, 30 kids in there taking the disc assessment. And it was so cool because going through the youth, they call it the youth exploratory report. So they go through and they're answering the questions. And then once they get, once you get the results, it gives you an idea of, it tells them what their, some of their strengths are, but it also gives them an idea of some of the career paths. And I remember seeing some of the, just some of the smiles on some of these kids' faces because they, they were like, wow, based on my personality, I could be, I could be this type of leader or I could be, because they didn't know, right? Because a lot of them, because of the school district that I was serving in, a lot of them, they really didn't have an awareness of what they could do because they only had maybe, you know, moms or dads who were working hourly type jobs or working at a factory type job. So they didn't really see themselves working outside of that. But seeing that piece of paper and seeing, okay, yep, I agree with this strength that I have. Yep, oh, doing that. Me talking is not really a bad thing. It's, it can be a good thing. And they're seeing that and they're and it's like, oh wow, I can be this. You know, like, oh, I can be the I can be a president of our organization. I mean, so it's just it just opened up their awareness, which was which was pretty cool. That's great. That's that's really good. And I know another thing for, for me, I had a client that I was working with because I understood her disc personnel, like she's more of an I. I'm a, I'm pretty much a CS, right? So I like, you know, bottom line details, all that type of thing. But when I was working with her. I know that with her eye personality, when she's when we start the call, she's gonna ask me, "Hey, Michael, how was your weekend?" That's gonna be like one of her questions, mainly because she wants me to ask her how her weekend was, right? Because she wants to be able to tell me, "Oh yeah, you know, we went to we went to this event or we did this," and she has to get that off her chest before she's gonna be willing to even listen to anything that I want to talk about. But because I understand that going in, it just makes it easier with that communication, right? Because I can relax and just say, oh, yeah, I can briefly, quickly tell her how my weekend was, but really ask her, so tell me, how was your weekend? You know, what did you do? And then, you know, she's going to go off and then she's ready to go on with the, the meeting. Yeah. The biggest skill that I, that I, that I try to master is listening. Because, you know, I think that listening is, is one of the best skills that we can really get on a master and people do because everyone everyone is really concerned about themselves mostly and you know which is fine which is that's that's the way our nature is so what other books have you read of john's it's probably too many to name list all 68 yeah here i are here right um everyone communicates few connect i absolutely love that book on communication because john talks about 
communicating one-on-one. -on -one. He talks about speaking from a stage or speaking to a, to a meeting. So that book has been really helpful. Um, the 15 Laws of Personal Growth has been, that's a book that I read at least once a year, The 15 Laws, because I grew up with a low self-image. And that book has helped me to constantly, you know, understand the importance of working on myself on a daily basis. And so, so yeah, those are probably my my top, that would be my top three books. Developing the Leader Within You, 15 Laws of Growth, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. And then, of course, John has lots of other books as well that have been really, really impactful. I got a couple of them from the conference. I couldn't, I couldn't get as many as I want because of my luggage. It would make my luggage too heavy. Oh, I understand. I, I'll, I'll tell you. So I've got. Um, let me see if I can pull it off real quick. So I've got this collection. So being a part of the, the leadership, they gave us um, this platinum edition here of some of John's books. So it's developing the leaders around you, developing the leader within 2.0, the 360 degree leader, the 21 immutable laws, and the 21 indispensable qualities of a leader. And I'm like, this is all nice. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever read any one of these books. I'll probably just keep them in the packaging because I already have other copies of the book, but I'm like, oh, this is nice. Well, thank you, Michael, for joining us today. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? I think we covered a lot, Jeff, about, um, you know, about really having everybody go out and, and making serving part of who they are. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's like, you don't have to, you don't have, your serving doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be known to the world, right? Serving could just be you starting in your own household. I, I'm going to be speaking in a couple of weeks at a local high school here. And I'm going to be talking to them about serving where they can just serve right where they're at, right? In their own household. You know, how can you, so how can you serve the, the members of your household? Then how can you serve your teachers and, and, and leaders in your, your school? So you can start where you're at. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You are, are my first guest on this new series called Chapters, where we're, where we're just diving in with various Maxwell coaches and talking about the, their favorite book and favorite chapter. And you definitely picked a, new, picked a great chapter, uh, develop, Developing a Leader Within, the 2.0 version, and the chapter, uh, The Heart of Leadership, Serving People, it's the one that's close to my heart. Of all the things that I do, serving other people is, is at the heart of what I do. And I think that's the heart of what most Maxwell coaches do. So if you'd like to find out more about John Maxwell and the John Maxwell leadership, we'll put some, uh, com we'll put some notes down the field and you can see, we'll put Michael, M Michael's information down, the, down there so you can contact Michael if you'd like to investigate any of that, any, any, of, any of the technology as far as speaking. Uh, uh, if you want to find out more about Toastmasters, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Toastmaster myself. Uh, and we meet at 12 o'clock on Wednesdays. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of Toastmasters in your area, either virtually or locally. And so you can find all the information, plus we'll put a link to some of the, John, some of the John's books so that you can find them on Amazon, and, and you can get your own copies. And if you want to come and join us in March at the Leadership Conference, we're gonna all, we'll all be there, and I'd love to see all of you there. Uh, put, just put your comments down and let us know that. If you have a story and a book that you've enjoyed of, my, of John's, because since he's written 68 of them over the last 50 plus 60 years, um, please let us know that as well. We'd love to do that. Remember to like and subscribe this channel, and please forward it out and share it with other people. And I thank you so much for joining us. And Michael, thank you so much for joining us on this episode one of this series. And we'd love to see you back here. We'll maybe we'll do another video sometime and we'll talk to you with you again. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.